page left, you can see the Lightning Talks programs. Today, uh, the little bit changed the Lightning Talk programs. The one more session in the end, end of the, this Lightning session is uh, uh, Epinas from the Sunday session. Okay? The, everyone, the presenters, are, do, are you ready? Okay? The, the way it starts, the Lightning Talk from the order of the same as this book. Are you ready? Okay? Okay? That first, the, let me say, Ia Zebreb, the titled Mapping Well with Maps Me and How People Fail at That. No? Okay. Can you help the Lightning Talks presentation? Yeah, please. Switch. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Ilya Zverev from MapsMe, and uh, I'll uh, speak really shortly about uh, uh, how useful the application is. Well, this is MapsMe. Some of you might know it, I hope. Uh, it's just uh, an app for uh, mobile phones. Uh, it shows uh, maps. It can do routing. It can do searching and all the stuff. And obviously, it's based on OpenStreetMap, so it works offline and so on. So, what uh, I'm about to talk about, uh, what I'm about to talk, is editing with MapsMe. And uh, there are many ways to edit, and some of these you might not know. Well, first, uh, you can do like with any other applications. You can set a waypoint. In MapsMe, it's called a bookmark. Um, you just uh, click on uh, something or long tap in, in any place, uh, type a name, and there is your waypoint or a bookmark. Then you can export a KML file and import in JOSM or whatever editor you use and uh, well, map some things you see on the way. But uh, Mapsne also has a built-in editor. You can just uh, log into OpenStreetMap and uh, tap at any place and choose edit place, and uh, well, it starts an editor for the, that object. And also, of course, you can add new shops, new restaurants, or whatever you see on the road. So you, you don't have to keep separate app. You just you can use MapsMe to navigate and also use it to improve the map on the way. All edits go directly to OpenStreetMap without any proxies, any intermediate servers. So when you uh, tap at place, at place to the map, uh, there will be a long list of types. You know in every editor, when you add a place, there is uh, a list of several hundreds of types, and it's hard to navigate and hard to find uh, things you need. So. Uh, uh, in MapsMe, there's a search, and it's, uh, it understands synonyms, so when you type foods, you can see all the options for cafes, restaurants, and so on. Right. Uh, and uh, then uh, you get a typical editor with uh, some fields uh, to fill, with name, with uh, open hours, with, I don't know, operator, cuisine for and so on. So, uh, open hours editor. I spoke a lot of time about uh, how it's, it is simple and uh, so on, but actually a few of you have noticed uh, the advanced mode button. What does it, what does it do? It uh, enters advanced mode with just one text field. 
and a long description of uh, uh, a syntax of opening hours. So if uh, your shop is closed uh, or last Thursday or a month, you can just go into this mode and edit open hours. Right. So uh, one question that is commonly asked, when does Maps.me send its edits to the open seat map? It doesn't have uh, the save button. So who here uh, does know where, when it save, saves the data? <laughs> yeah, nobody. <laughs> so it happens when you close the application, like return to the home screen or switch the app. And uh, in that moment, uh, all the data you have edited gets sent to the server. Uh, about uh, editing names, uh, in the OpenStreetMap there are many name fields. There is a default name, name in different languages uh, like English and Japanese, international name, local name, and so on. And uh, we've got many complaints about MapsMe editors uh, changing names uh, on objects, like uh, Chinese tourists uh, going to, I don't know, Amsterdam, and changing names of landmarks to Chinese. So we protect uh, the name field and allow editing local names, like Japanese uh, and English in this case. So how do you edit a regular name tag if you're from OpenStreetMap and know what it means? First, you can change both, both of these names and the application will understand that you want to change a name and will change it. And second, if you tap add a language, then at the bottom of the list, there will be an item native language. And that is the name tag. Right, some places cannot be edited, like names of the city. So how come uh, some users manage to change it, like replace uh, a city with a shop? Uh, that's uh, because of our matching algorithm. Uh, when you create a point very close, like in centimeters, near the existing point, then matching algorithm will uh, assume you're not creating but editing an object. That happens very rarely, but it does. So, and that's how some villages were turned into supermarkets. And what if uh, you cannot find the type that uh, you want in the list of types. That also happens, like some insurance office. Uh, then you choose anyone you like. It will be, of course, incorrect, like uh, attraction for, in this case, bakery. But then you scroll down and write a note. <laughs> OK, <laughs> this is uh, last but one slide. Add a note. Uh, additional info is OpenStreetMap note. So it will be added, and later you can change it. And uh, yeah, if you find any bugs, then just report to us. We read this email, and we'll fix it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. The next presentation is the, the by Ms. Naoko Inoue. The title is Open Street Map in My Home, uh, How Awesome Affect to My Family's Life. I ring the bell in five minutes. Starts presentation. <laughs> Start. Hello, my name is Naoko Inoue. Open street map in my home. My husband started OSM since. 2008, and has participated with my family in various activities up to now. I will talk about family and fami family impacts 
participating in the activities. I live in Fukushima in Japan. My family is my husband and two sons and my daughter. Next, volunteer activities. Besides my work, I am doing volunteer activities for a kids' association, for example, foot baseball support. This picture is training camp, foot baseball team and softball team. And I read the picture book for children at elementary school. So I'm tired and I'm sleepy on holidays. Next, go to mapping together. When my husband goes farm, I go with my family. This picture is Mount Azuma Kofuji. My son worked as a mapper. This picture is Tsurugao, Tsuruga Castle. I see sightsee the place we visited and we eat the famous food, the land. We visit, visited Yokohama City near Tokyo. We visited Kamakura City. This is a famous Tsurugaoka shrine. This picture is Hiraizumi. This place is a World Heritage Site. This is a historically famous place. There are 21 World Heritage Sites in Japan, so I enjoyed the other day's trip. On a site, Senbei Soup. <laughs> Next, hazard map. As a volunteer, I have created a hazard location map. I made it together with those of school PTA and Fukushima City Office. One of the objectives is to create attention call signs for rivers and waterways in school areas. The other is for road safety. This picture is dangerous riverside. We need a signboard that protects from danger. It's a place where crossing is dangerous. There are a lot of traffic here, and many children pass. It is dangerous. Then I mapped Fukushima City. I put on the dangerous part with the map, and we introduced a dangerous path map to everyone at elementary school. I will keep safe living activity for local people. I will do my best. Well, today I talked about the theme of open street map in my home. I went to mapping with children. They also enjoyed. After that, they grew and knew theirs away. They moved away from the, the OSM. However, if everyone learning the piano, they will not become pianist. I think that my sons worked with my father and mapped. This experience will be precise and wonderful life asset. For them, having met with MAPA and local too, I'm looking forward to meeting new places. I will visit my daughter in the future. This is the end of my <laughs> speak. Thank you for listening to the end. Thank you very much. The next presentation is the by Noriko Takiguchi as a title the Japanese Ashioto no Kotsu Yorokobi, the angel of the mapping.
Does someone help to presentation? どうぞ。はい、すいません。聞こえてましたかね。はい、今から行きます。えー、こんにちは、えー。世界の方々との交流ができるこの場で。こうして私の日頃のマッピングをお話しできることが今日はもうとても嬉しくて本当にワクワクしておりますえ私はあの貢献度のサイトによると一応グレートマッパーにランク付けされているようですで2014年度から2014年からマッパー入りをしまして年々一応活動範囲は広がってますえ編集ツールは JOSM がほとんどですでえー、っとえー、主に日本中心にマッピングたまに旅行に行った先をマッピングしたり、えー、とほんのたまにですがクライシスマッピングの協力もしています、まあ、そんなことで私が愛用している GPS ロガーはこれで,であの GPS センサーでログを取るときはこのようなアプリケーションを使ってますマピラリーは素晴らしいんですけどあまりあのバッテリーの加減で少ししか使ってませんえということで初めてその GPS をアップしたのが2014年の12月、えっと、どこをしたかと言いますと京都の岡崎地区の、えっと、マッピングパーティーで歩いた時のログをアップしてみましたでもそれ以後アップできていないので今回この機会に自分の歩いた GPS トラックだとかそれに基づいたマッピング状況を整理してみたいなと思いましたでえっと、旅行行った先とかマッピングパーティーとかいろんな歴史の道最近あの私の中でブームになっている歴史の道を歩いたところとかを、えー、オーバーパス API を使ってみたり、えっと、最近覚えた QGIS で今日は表現してみましたえ2014年はわずか2か所2015年になりますと京都の神社仏閣をよく巡っていましたのでこの辺りが赤くなってます2016年になりますと GPS ロガーを, 2つを買いましたのでログが2つの種類のものがありますあそうですねそれとちょっと旅行に行った先の台湾なんかにも挑戦してみましたで2017年はついこのゴールデンウィークにバリ島に行ったんですがまだマッピングには反映されておりませんえということでまず旅行からいくつか紹介したいと思いますえこの時はまだロガーを持っていませんでしたので、えー、とマップスミーオフラインマップを利用しまして行った先をポツポツと登録しましてでそれで帰ってから、えー、と写真をもとにちょっと初めてでドキドキしたんですが2箇所あたりマッピングしてみました夕日がとてもきれかったのでビューポイントを登録したり、えーこのスタンレーという町ではもうイギリス人の方が多く住まわれていたのかなもうオープンストリートマップの情報はすごくたくさんあったんですけどちょうど何かあの食地図に食地図の案内板があったのがすごく初めて見たような感じで珍しかったので登録してみましたでその他、えー、2016年、えー、っと今度台湾に行った時はめでたく GPS ログを持っていましたのでそれを撮りながら観光写真も撮りながらマッピング視点の写真を撮ってベンチを登録したり、えーっとそうですね、車椅子の情報を追記してみたりしています。えっとまあ、日本国内もいろいろ何かの折に旅行行った時にはマッピングしています。これは宮津の天の橋立とか、えー、っと伊根の船屋行った時のものです。でこちらは、えー、っとバスツアーで巡った
尾道と今治を結ぶ島並海道であったり車でドライブした淡路島であとスキーにも行くんですがスキー場でもログを取ってみてあの喜んでいましたでその中で祠なんかも見つけたらスキーを外してちょっと写真を撮ってみたりもしていますで次にあの私がここまで育った育てていただいたマッピングパーティーについて、えーそこの中でも思い出深いものにみんなで北木島という瀬戸内海の小さい島に遠征しましてえそ,そ,、えー、っとそこで石切場を観光して U マップに表現してみましたそのほか、えー、っと堺では仁徳天皇陵をとは言わないのかちょっと忘れましたがその近くの<笑>他の、もず古墳群ですね。今せ、あ、もう時間ですか。はい。すいません。まあ、そんな感じで、ちょっとここは言いたいですね。えっと、この前、最近のマッピングパーティーで、まず、当日をマッピングした箇所。で、ここが、それ以降、今日までのマッピング箇所。で、私の GPS を加えたもの。こういうものが表現できることが分かって、非常に喜んでいます。その他、ウォーキング、まあ、ずっと行って、ちょっと言いたいところが、えっと、これで、えー、と夜川道とかいったところで、えー、ガイドポストやこれがね、あのー、ハイキングに重要な、えー、と自動販売機が2箇所しかないということとかトイレの場所とかやって、まあ、こういう感じでずっともうこの辺は飛ばしましてもう<笑>最後に行きますあのこれで締めますのですいません、えー、っとそういうところ行ったものを皆さんにあの活用してもらえたら嬉しいなとオフラインマップで見つけにくい道しるべが見つけられたり、えー、っと熊の情報があったりとかこういうのもマッピングしておりますどうぞご利用くださいということでハッピーマッピングということで<笑>ありがとうございました。Thank you very much. The next presentation is by Andrew s e t u k the title is Digital Globe Open Data Program, s a t u r a t e Imaginary for Disaster Response. Andrew. Try b u t b u t o n b i b o t o m i g a w a b o t o m i m i g i o t o n o b o t o n p r a y Um, hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Steele, and、uh, I'm part of the Digital Globe Asia Pacific team、uh, based out of Singapore. I work as a technical sales engineering manager. And today, I wanted to introduce you to you about Digital Globe's open data program. So, first of all, about Digital Globe、uh, we are the market leader in remote sensing. Since 1999, we've been launching very, very expensive cameras into space. And taking pictures of the Earth.、Um, from 1999 for Econos, on to QuickBird, and now on to the Worldview and GOI satellites, taking images at 30 centimeter to 50 centimeter resolution. Most of you may know it as the images that you see on Google Earth, or for this community, some of the images that you see on the edit layers for OpenStreetMap. Without having some of the most recent, Images available for, for editing, you cannot get the accurate information that is seen on the ground of an ever changing planet. So, today, I want to talk about some of the disaster applications. Digital Globe has a paid service for looking at disasters around the world. We have a team monitoring the news, and whenever there is a disaster that happens, there's a team that talks to the satellite and says, Here are the impacted areas, satellites. Go and collect this area. We want to give it in the hands of the people that matter, people who, who can take action with it, 
and to create the images into actionable information. We, create, uh, we collect photos of uh, volcanoes, photos of landslides for, for disaster response as an editable layer can get you the most important information to get situational awareness on the ground. Earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, wildfires, floods, and some of these that affect more than 100,000, 200,000 people, these are the events that we cover uh, and, and not sort of the smaller and medium-sized ones. So again, if I, I encourage you to, to look for these images that are being released. We actually just released um, some of the landslides and mudslides from Sierra Leone, um, the images covering these areas uh, today. And so we have our program partners. Um, and so please reach out to Digital Globe. Uh, please reach out to our partners. And you can actually request images to be uh, loaded into OpenStreetMap um, for your purposes. And, and of course, please, out to, please reach out to me. Uh, my email is here. I'll be uh, walking around here uh, for the next few days. And so uh, I encourage you to use the satellite images um, for good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next presentation is uh, by uh, Koki Hiragasan, uh, titled uh, Senior Group Activity in Kakegawa, Japan. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Koki Hiraga, and I'm in charge of OpenStreetMap at the site of Shizuoka Prefecture. In my story, I'd like to uh, talk about the activity that the local senior group manages. So the title is Challenge by Senior Mappers. So next slide. I'd like to cover two points. First of all, why did we start OSM activity? Then I will explain our contribution. Let's start by looking at our group. Our hometown is Kakegawa, located in the middle of Japan. Our activity has started since April last year. Our mission is to approach local OSM data as much as possible. The average age is around 70. Not so old, <laughs> but a <be> enough. <laughs> Why did we start OSM activity? What can we do with the senior team? It was a question. You know Tatataka? You were known? He is a historic great man who completed the first map in Japan 200 years ago. He began studying geography in his 50s era. It is also a pioneer of senior generation way of living. It is also a his, his way of living is lifelong learning and contributes continuous effort. Let's try something anyway. Let's, let's do it is a spirit. His spirit. His spirit is a, a motivation to start our activity. Let's move on the, to the next section on our achievement. In the first year, we expanded the mapping area of not only Kakegawa city, but also whole city and towns. Over 150,000 buildings were uploaded in total. At the same time, more than 50,000 mapillary photos were uploaded. 
Saman se, many a little drop of water makes a river and an ocean. Okay. I well known FO map can create an artistic 3D map based on OSM data. Based on our data, we can see our site using FO map. Omaezaki is a beautiful town surrounded by the Pacific Ocean. And the in inland area has advanced urbanization with excellent transport network such as Tomei Expressway and Shinkansen. Our agriculture is still one of the main industry in this area. Farmland account for 20 percent and, and forest make up 50 percent of the mapping zone. Okay. From this point of view, input of data of agricultural land, forest, roadside trees, private trees seem to be important for creating landscape maps just like building information. In promoting this, Kakegawa City released the latest high resolution aerial photographs and supported our works. I hope this amazing 3D map will motivate our future work and that the local people will be interested in our activities. I expect it. I am grateful for my colleague contribution and I would like to end my presentation in hope that my information will be useful for you. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. A very great mapping effort. Our next presentation is learning talks from the Juan Ignacio and La Cueva, uh, titled Making Argentina Slums Visible Nationwide for Government and Academy. Please. Thank you. Um, so my name is Juan Ignacio, um, and we, I'm talking about the project that we want to make the situation of many people living in slums in Argentina. So uh, I work for Wingu, uh, which is an NGO that helps other NGOs apply technology to uh, what, what they do. Uh, we teamed up with Techo, which is an NGO uh, working in habitat uh, issues. So together we partnered and we made a, a project that's called Relevamiento de Asentamientos Informales, which is something like survey for slums. And they had a, a very nice uh, slogan that it's, it's uh, called, it's not a city it's if it's not for everyone. So the, the goal of this project is to, um, to make visible the problems that people live in the cities, but they are not like the official part of the cities because they're they live in slums. So um, in this survey, they found that there are uh, this many slums in, in the whole uh, country, and a lot, lot of people living in them. So it is very important to, to make this problem uh, visualized and, and make a demand to the government, because all these people don't usually have uh, access to, to drinking water or uh, disposable uh, and many public services. Uh, and the, the one of a very important data that they had is 75% uh, of these slums are very easy to uh, fix in the meaning that they already have all the necessary things to, for the state to go there, make some public works, and make all, all these people living there uh, reach the public services. They, there's not much to do. That, that they have a, like a very clean grid, so uh, transport can go there very easily. 
Uh, there are some slums that are very complicated because they have very narrow uh, corridors, but most of them not. So after about a year that took to survey all these slums, uh, we published all this open data. They found all these, uh, this is just a province, uh, they found all these slums. Uh, so we made it public uh, in, a, in a platform in which they release all the, the problems that they have, every, every data for each of these neighborhoods. Uh, then uh, they started uh, doing some layers. This pl platform is, uh, the public is, they have three publics, the government, the, the media, and the academy. So uh, they, they, they wanted to, to make all this information public. And one important thing they do is they made an index for each problem, like education, water, electricity. They made an index of, on, on each category, which are the most vulnerable, vulnerable uh, neighborhoods. So they made an index because many, um, many municipalities don't have G, G, GIS uh, resources. Uh, they also, we teamed up with Digital Globe and they provide us uh, before and after images so we can keep track on how these uh, slums either grew or shrink. Uh, well, this is uh, the, the audiences for the platform. And the role for the OSM is uh, usually slums are not mapped uh, in, in commercial uh, maps like Google Maps. So o OSM gets very uh, relevant for this. As I said, most uh, governments don't have GIS resources, so for example, the index is very helpful for them because if they have to say, they have to decide where they're going to put a new school, they can use all this information to know which uh, location would benefit the most people. Uh, many slums are located in places that not even the surroundings are well mapped, so it's hard to, to get to know the context of these families. Uh, this project also encourages new mapping projects. For example, I met Selen from Map uh, Geochicas, and they are also teaming up with uh, Techo, and they are going to map uh, inside each of these slums, uh, not only in Argentina, but also in many other countries. Uh, making this data available also helps the academic sector, and it's easier to, to, contract, to help these projects. Um, one of of our goals was to make this uh, official. So uh, after a while, uh, we got an execu executive order from the president, and they made a, a national entity that coordinates uh, efforts for provincial, uh, national, and municipalities to take public services to these lands. They created a national registry for these neighborhoods, and they. Um, they now have a, a national uh, entity that depends on the uh, chief of ministries to, to help these uh, neighborhoods get uh, public services. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next session is by uh, Stefan Keller, the title is Court Game Reloaded. The fun continues. Please. Hello, Konnichiwa. Okay. I just wanted to make a short presentation about a new mobile app um, which has been relaunched. It's called Court with a K. And uh, you remember when sitting in the train or in the subway, um, what does everybody do? S sitting and uh, entertaining some and doing something? So five years ago, um, as a professor, I had to, um, in, had to advise some students to make a nice game because 
they are computer scientists and uh, want to make a game. And uh, so Court was born as a serious game. So you are not the correct audience for this kind of game because it should be and become a game for everybody which, uh, without even knowing he is contributing to OpenStreetMap. So um, Court was born. And Court, of course, has some incentives. So you can collect coins, uh, not with C, just because of the, um, the name Court. And it's a virtual money, so it's not real money. And when you start the game, you just have to switch on the GPS. And uh, that's it. And then um, you, the, the goal is, in fact, just to get into the high score um, and collect coins. So um, let's start. You usually have to log in with uh, an account, but uh, you, you don't have to. Um, the map shows, it's an OpenStreetMap map, map uh, shows some uh, neighborhood nearby, and it's showing you some missions. Uh, and, and the mission is to add some missing data. And um, it's only a certain amount of missions which are really um, suitable for court because um, you can't edit uh, new data, I mean, new geographical positions. Um, it's only about adding attributes, so missing attributes and values to existing OpenStreetMap objects. So, for example, you see a road or something over there, and, uh, or you see a restaurant sign, and this restaurant probably has no name. So, uh, or no cuisine. Of course, in Japan, the chance that the Japanese cuisine is rather high, but uh, there are still very nice, very nice um, Italian restaurants, for example, I found yesterday um, in Aizu. So it asks you some predefined um, items to choose, like, for example, Italian. And so you add it, and so you get some additional um, coins. Another, item, uh, another mission would be what kind of track is it? Is it um, concrete? Is it paved or asphalt or gravel? You choose one and get another 25 coins. And this is done uh, for about seven types of missions. Um, a rather complicated one is the one for adding op uh, opening hours, but there is an editor to add a new one. So it's not editing existing one, it's just entering new one, which is much easier, even in, in OpenStreetMap. So um, at the end, you assembled some amount of coins. You accomplished five missions. Two of them have been today. And so you get some achievements, which are some badges, vir virtual badges, all um, as part of the map. And uh, so af after you have uh, com accomplished a mission, um, you get this kind of badge. You can um, have, okay, look at the high score, and that's it. You can uh, now go to uh, this web page, which is just the web page showing some information. Um, Android users can already download the, um, the game through GitHub, um, through a usual APK, but soon um, on Android and iOS, this game will be relaunched as a native app on the usual stores to, in to be installed on your mobile phone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next session is by uh, Toshikazu Seto, Nobusuke Wasaki, Yusuke Yuichiro Nishimura, and the uh, speaker is uh, Nobusuke Iwasaki, uh, titled uh, Evaluation of Data Broad Frequency and User Interaction of OSM in Japan. Nobuske, please start. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> okay, please. Uh, 
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is, the title of the presentation, uh, presentation is Evaluation of the Data Updating Frequency and User Interaction of the OSM in Japan, a case study of the OSM note. And, and my name is Nobusuke. Uh, I, the username, uh, user ID of the OSM is Wata909, but honestly to say, I'm not an active mapper. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, uh, Another presentation uh, presenter is uh, Seto. Uh, he's in the Boston, so that I I'm, I'm presenting these presentations. So we concerned uh, to the OSM note uh, that is the memo. The note is the core feature of the OpenStreetMap website for the placing uh, the placing shared note on the map of assistant in the mapping uh, editing OpenStreetMap. Uh, the note allow for two-way communication with the uh, uh, ability for the mapper uh, to ask for more detail if uh, details if necessary. Uh, the, the function of the note uh, started uh, since twenty uh, fourth April, so like this. And the, this graph is a, a global overview. Is a note. The, you can see the closed. Uh, he, 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 this is the tendency of the uh, opened the number of the opened note and closed the note. The, uh, so uh, here is a very, uh, the first. There is a no difference between the open note and the closed note. But uh, after the 2006, uh, 2060, was in uh, 2016, uh, we can see the difference between opened node and uh, closed node, so that we uh, evaluate why this kind of the difference is began. The, this is the method, okay? <laughs> and the, uh, sorry, uh, oh, oh, oh. okay. So uh, in, in this method, uh, we get the dump file uh, OSN and convert to OSM files and the, to convert to the OSM files and uh, to read these files into the quantum GIS. So uh, this is a, a, a distribution of the OSM node of the world. And this is a relationship between the open and closed node <coughs> by the country. It's the f maybe the first is German, the second is Russian, and the United States, French, United Kingdom, and Japan is here. The rank is 90s. And th this is the OSM node distribution in Japan. And the uh, with some node distribution uh, counting by prefectures. So uh, we can see it's uh, many nodes in the Hokkaido, Tokyo, Kanagawa, Ishikawa, uh, Kyoto, Osaka, or Hyogo. Okay, uh, at one minute. <laughs> then, and this is uh, the OSM node user ranking. The most uh, uh, Frequent uh, the note uh, editor is anonymous. It, that is that means the, this note uh, uh, edited by the not login users, and the dis distribution of the uh, and this is a uh, uh, the version uh, of the note in Japan. The version one is uh, is uh, the first number of the uh, uh, the number. Uh, Version is version one. Uh, version one means is there means not there is no communication between the uh, users. And so, based on the tools, uh, the the viewpoint of the tools, uh, the most of the node uh, uh, opened by using uh, MapsMe. So if you can if you see the node, you can see it's uh, this, this kind of the track, and you can find the this note is uh, opened by maps me. It, okay, this this is a distribution, and also there is an anonymous uh, the note uh, used by anonymous user. That means uh, anonymous user through the, uh, something like Facebook. And oh, 
five minutes. <laughs> and so this is a distribution of the uh, user uh, uh, not discussion about the Facebook in Japan. It, this is the findings of the uh, our research. So, sorry, this is the, the to develop the method to extract growth node uh, used for analysis of the GS data and the resolution of the uh, resolution period. And, and it is necessary to analyze the contents of the text deeply. I'm sorry, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. The, the next is uh, uh, by a mega sprint titled Swiss Community Service. Konnichiwa. I'm Michael from the Swiss OpenStreetMap Association. The Swiss OpenStreetMap Association was founded in 2012, and we uh, are a local chapter since 2016. Um, we founded the Swiss Association to uh, have a formal entity to communicate with the government and uh, other uh, companies, and also to uh, have a, a central pr place to, to run the services. So we have uh, many people who made useful tools, uh, sometimes specifically for Switzerland, and we just wanted to uh, reduce the, the bus factor that's if someone can't work on it anymore, that uh, these tools are not lost. So I will uh, show you uh, the services we run today as the Swiss Association. Uh, we have a server, actually uh, two. One is a backup. They're loc located in Bern. We do uh, map rendering, but only for Switzerland. So we only load data for Switzerland, which is a lot easier to do map rendering than if you would have the whole world. We have a few styles. We have an adapted standard style, the one you know from osm.org. We have uh, another um, basic background layer intended for points of interest use. Uh, we also provide tiles in the Swiss coordinate systems. And we have four language versions for the for uh, Swiss languages. So this is the uh, background, the, the simple background style, which I think is uh, unique, which was uh, developed for us. We uh, have an extract. Like I said, we only render Switzerland. Uh, as a side product, we also publish this extract on planet.osm.ch, and we also provide hourly diffs. Then we run an overpass instance, again, only limited to Switzerland. And uh, we have an overpass turbo instance for easy access at overpassturbo.osm.ch. Uh, we have routing. We use the OSRM, um, again, only for Switzerland. But we have uh, five different profiles, not only car, but also two cycling profiles, one more for the city, one for touring, uh, and two for on, on foot, one walking and one hiking, and it's updated twice a day. We also run a UMAP instance, which is not so different from the global one from France. We have a tag info, which is again limited to Switzerland, so you can uh, search which tags are popular, especially in Switzerland. Uh, how is the distribution for Switzerland? Uh, we have a special tool for uh, comparing public transport stops. I will have another lightning talk about that one. 
we have an instance of the tasking manager, which uh, is also open to anyone, any projects. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please see me afterwards. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have the one more presentation for the, uh, moving from the Sunday's learning talks and the EPNAS, title of EPNAS, particularly monitoring to health security on disaster by uh, Ms. Ms. Sakiko Kambara. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, sorry, and thank you very much uh, uh, having for, uh, for having asked about um, our introduction. I'm not a mapper, but uh, I really a beneficiary of OpenStreetMap because we are nurse and we are nurse and humanitarian aid uh, action uh, practitioner. So I always use OpenStreetMap. So I would like to uh, thank you so much in this time and how to use OpenStreetMap at a time of disaster. Yeah, and uh, we are. I'm founder of Epinars project. Epinars mean, Epinars mean daily monitoring of living environment and the data transmission on health risk ensure health and safety and communities. Not to detect the disease, but help and keep and health security and care to uh, affected patient. And EpiNurse use ICT toolkit to assess living condition and provide crucial aid to hard to collect evidence, of especially for communicable disease and prevent a eruption and up outbreak and health threat. This is an overview of the development of EpiNAS model for hygiene monitoring, not detecting a disease. Uh, usually at, at the time of disaster, at, at the daily life and in the hospital, we count disease number in quantity. And at the time of disaster, we go to mobile clinic and the patient and the survivor go to clinic and they count at the count of disease number. But in shelter, we have to care, but we cannot see where is the people and where is the survivor, and where is the shelter. We have to find out that. But sometimes we cannot find out because no map. And because people move to shelter or evacuate or sometimes isolated. So we have to collaborate with OpenStreetMapper and we have to ask some where, we have to ask where the survivors are. So, <laughs> We epidemiology nurse, epidemiology nurse, epi nurse mean epidemiology nurse, and we also work not only at the time of disaster, but we have to work very long term and continuous effort because shelter, shelter living life is very long. Not, not, not only three days or five days. Or in, for example, in Nepal, still now survivors still work uh, living in shelter. Some of them. So we sometimes calculate the hygiene monitoring and the physical environment assessment, and environment assessment, and we use analog map, map, mapping and also open source map, and we detect water hygiene and food hygiene, food security, and the environment the house, and we map. And using ICT tool, and we can understand where is vulnerable area or a good practice area. We can identify it. And this is an example of the interface of our work. Yeah, and our, our EPI nurse is work in 
a launch in Japan, but we work for at the time of Typhoon Yolanda late 2013. We collaborate with Ateneo de Manila University, I collaborate with them, and we, uh, we use OpenStreetMap and use eBayanihan. This is one of the um, monitoring tool for health security, and we map the, which is a food security area, good food security area, and the water hygiene was area like that. And next, and we, we faced on Nepal quake 2015. At that time, we used eBayanihan on Philippines, but very, uh, IT uh, I, infrastructure is very, very bad, so I asked KLL, KLL uh, Kataman's Living Labs, uh, president, the, the name of the director is Nama, and I asked him, and I asked to use KLL correct, uh, to powered by Kataman's Living Labs, and I, we use this system, and we mapping, and where is the safety area, and where is shelter, and we can, uh, we finally, outreach to uh, shelter because we cannot find out uh, so far, so, so uh, at the time, we very, very difficult to find out the shelter, especially for vulnerable area. Now we uh, extend our work to um, another country, Indonesia, especially in Indonesia and the Congo. So uh, in more of the future, and further information, please visit our Epinas homepage website. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Latin Talks is finished at this uh, section, and the last presentation is finished. The next is uh, lunchtime. And I have some questions. Huh? No problem. And uh, uh, here, the main hall is prohibited to eat, drink, and take uh, food.